the string. So there you go, there's the demo. Okay everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at this pretty cool Spirit by Steinberger. If you haven't seen one of these before, this is a, a neat guitar. Not everybody's cup of tea, but it's pretty cool. Take a look. So this is uh, actually uh, a Gibson product. Uh, I was looking through the case candy today and noticed that the literature that came with it said that it was a product by Gibson. So evidently, you know, Gibson manufactures these spirits and it was, uh, I'll show you that here in just a minute. But this is a cool, this is a really cool little guitar. It's great for traveling. It sounds nice. It's it gets it's kind of wild to try to play this thing, honestly. Trying to sit down with it and it just it feels a little different. But let's let's take a closer look at it. Uh, just wanted to give you the the big the broad view of it with a camera on a tripod first, so you can see it stable, and then I'll take the camera down and. We'll zoom in a, in a little bit and get a bit of a closer look. Let's take a look real quick at the stuff that came in the that came with us. I've had this guitar for two or three years, and um, I don't play it all that much, but it's cool. It's pretty cool, man. Got some uh, Allen keys for some of the adjustments. A couple spare picks. Um. All right, so I did a change. I did a little bit of a change on this guitar, uh, a change up when I got it. Uh, one thing I don't like about these particular tremolo systems is they take double ball strings. So a double ball string basically has two <laughs> two balls. <laughs> um, it goes up here and it, and it connects down here. And these are expensive. I mean, a set of double ball strings, one set is like 15 bucks or so. And uh, so I opted to change this nut, the nut, I changed the nut out to a, um, a nut that just takes uh, regular strings. You just string them through and lock them in and then you tighten it down there. So I kept the original nut which I may wind up putting back on there. We'll see. I've never changed the strings on this guitar before, other than when I put these on there, I thought I'd be changing them regularly. So maybe I'll just put it back to original. But here's the Steinberger um, owner's manual. <laughs> Lose your head again. They came out in 1980. Talks about general care of the instrument overview. Now, don't be confused on this model. This is a cheap, cheaper, less expensive version. The original Steinbergers go. I've seen them go for five, six thousand bucks. Maybe the prices have gone up or down since I last priced them. But they had the original, the the trans trem on them. This is just a regular tremolo. It is not the trans trem system. But here on the back of this thing, it shows a part of the Gibson brand. It's got the Nashville, Tennessee address on there. So I'm sure these are made overseas, but I didn't realize it until a few minutes ago, getting ready for this video, that Gibson, that Spirit by Steinberger was part of the Gibson brand. So huh, go figure. All right, let me take this camera down, and we're going to take a closer look at this thing. Okay, up close and personal. Let's get up to this finish. Take a look at what it looks like here. We've got kind of a blue, this is kind of a blue burst going on. Darker on the outside, lighter on the inside. Very pretty. Got Steinberger pickups. Two humbuckers in a single coil. Got a five-way blade. 
So we can select, you know, just different selections, just like Strat. I don't think this splits these to a single coil. I could be wrong. Don't really remember. They are not push-pull knobs, just regular tone and volume. Let's look at how this tremolo bar sits in here. It just slides out. Look at look how smooth this, this bar looks. And it just, you know, just like magic. Boom. Slides in just smooth, perfect. Here's the tuning system. Here's what that looks like. I'll lift up on the bar a little bit so you can take a look down in there. Look at this. pretty wild you know you can do all kinds of cool adjustments with this these tuners work really good there's a lot of reach to these when you tune it up so you can get it you know get it in tune get it to pitch and then you can attach a strap here or here look at these saddles on this bridge It's like a spaceship, you know, an alien craft when you f first start working on it. <laughs> this, is, this is just a unique, unique bridge. Okay, so then fretboard. This looks like a, you know, a nice dark ebony fretboard, dot inlay. And here's the, here's the replacement nut that I put on it. So the way this this nut works is, the strings just go through like this and then you lock them down and then you know, get them kind of tight when you pull them through and then lock them in then of course the the ball is back there and then you you tune it to pitch then you lock the lock you know the locking nut locked down it stays in tune just fine this thing has got a little kickstand so you can sit down with it I thought this was kind of neat when you lift the kickstand up. Well, the input jack is down there, but when you lift the kickstand up, there's your serial number. <laughs> Not sure how to rate these. If it's true to a Gibson serial number, then that fifth digit, I guess, would be the year. I haven't done a lot of research on these. I'm not sure the manufacturing years of these models. I believe they still make them. All right, so one control cavity. We'll open that up and take a look in there. And we've got a set neck. thing is painted just perfectly. I mean, it's super clean. Headless guitars are bizarre, though. I mean, they're just unusual. So let me take the back off, and we'll take a look at the control pots, the, the volume and tone pots in that five-way. We'll see what that looks like. All right, for all the wiring guitar geeks out there, this is the inside. Not a whole lot of room in here to work with. That input jack takes up a lot of the, or output jack, I should say, takes up a lot of room in there. Nice size pots in there. Well, they got a lot going on in this little space. So there you go. Routed out nice, real clean, clean holes. Everything, everything looks good. So I guess the last thing we need to do is plug this thing in and see what this thing sounds like. So let's check that out. <laughs> Thank you.